Are gonna stay like that or? Might need just something to hold it down to Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you here today, whether you're joining us here at the parking lot of Truth Baptist Church, Mechanicsville, Virginia, or if you're anywhere else in the entire world watching live stream. We're glad that all of you can be part of this service with us. We're going to start together by worshiping the Lord in song. I'd like to encourage each of you, wherever you are, to gather and sing to the Lord. Uh, this isn't a spectator thing. This is something we can involve ourselves with. The Lord deserves all the praise that we can give Him. And so let's worship the Lord with our voices. If you would, please uh, sing with me. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord.
fiery trials. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, by grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. Thy flesh shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to singing I hope I can't hear you but I trust you're singing to the Lord let's sing another song together how about this when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more when the roll is called up yonder sing with me now when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the same the earth shall gather over Shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor, let us labor for the master from the dawn till set sun. to our drive-in service this morning at Truth Baptist Church. Thank you for being with us. Hey, if you have your AC on, put on your blinkers. How many have your AC running? All right, yeah, several of you, that's good. How many of you are still holding out? No AC right now, no AC is on. <laughs> Some smart people parked over here in the shade. Yes, very good, smart thinking over there. And uh, it's hot this morning, a little warm, and uh, my, my phone was feeling the warmth, and so I appreciate Trent and the umbrella being <laughs> taking care of things up here for us thank you for joining us by live stream sorry it went out there for a little while but we're going to have a good service today we're going to praise the lord god is good amen and uh, what a blessing that we can meet here and be in this place and worship together even if it's outside in a parking lot uh, god is still in heaven and jesus is still seated on the right hand of god and we're going to have a wonderful day today amen and uh, so thank you for being here. We're glad that you came. I think I, I see a few visitors with us. And if you're visiting, thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, we're purposely not giving out visitor materials uh, just to be careful. But if you want to tune into our live stream and on the stream, mention that you're visiting uh, or that you are here in the parking lot visiting. Uh, or you can send an email to us at pastor at truthbaptistchurch.com and let us know that you are visiting. If you're visiting by way of live stream on the internet today, let us know that you're here. We're thankful that you're with us. It's a joy to have you here today. What a blessing it is to be together. Uh, before we do anything else, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this time that we have together meeting on this wonderful property that you've provided for our church. Thank you for Truth Baptist Church. Thank you for the people who decided to be here this morning. <coughs> we know it's a little warm. But, Lord, we're glad that you're in control. We're glad that we have a sunny day today and uh, that you're providing for your people and that we have an opportunity to meet here in this place and to do your will and to worship you in this fashion. We do pray that you'd be glorified in all that is said and done here. Thank you for your love for us. I pray that you would encourage hearts and convict us where we need convicting. I pray that you would strengthen us where we need strengthened. And help us to move on, upward and onward for you as we continue forward. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for being here. Uh, let me mention that we'll have another service tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll be live streaming from the auditorium. 
I'll look forward to that, and I hope that you'll tune in with us again at the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, we will have a bucket that you can drop your offering in uh, as, uh, as you leave, and so we will collect that from you if need be, if you brought that with you. I know many people, as we've said, are giving online through our online portal. Uh, others are, are giving through the mail, and that's fine. But we will have that available again to you today for your convenience, and I hope it will be a help and a blessing to you. Uh, welcome. And uh, I hope maybe you'll get a little bit of a suntan. I thought I might wear my wool coat the whole time, but I took that off pretty quick. And uh, maybe you can tell people I went to church and got a suntan all together, all in one. And uh, I hope it's a, a, a blessed time for you today. Uh, I hope that God has been good to you. And uh, we're going to have a good week this week. We're looking forward to several things that we'll be doing. Wednesday night we'll be live streaming our Wednesday midweek service as well. Brother Greg Parisher is going to bring the message that night. And uh, we'll continue on uh, this week with all that God has for us. Um, I'm going to ask now at this time, although we're collecting the offering later, that Holly Zinn, if she would play the offertory for us. Thank you very much. That was a blessing. And uh, it's good that we still have an opportunity to obey the Lord as we give to the Lord and give back to Him. Let's sing together, though. Let's sing a new chorus that we'll be give, uh, doing here for the month in May. The song is this, My Faith Still Holds On to the Christ of Calvary. Let's sing that together. We'll sing it through twice.
once more. My faith still holds on to the Christ of Calvary. Oh, blessed rock of ages, for me, I gladly place my trust in things I cannot see. My faith still Thank you for singing, and thank you for those that have been helping us here. Uh, think of Sterling and Mrs. Freetag as well, Mrs. Zinn. Thank you all so much. That was a blessing. All right. Well, a little cloud cover. That's welcome. Uh, take your Bibles this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, please. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Can everybody hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. Very good. Very good. Do you have your Bibles today? Hold your Bibles out the window if you have your Bible. All right. I can see them through the windshield or out the window. That's great. We are in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Reading in verse 1 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. And there the Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, under the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. I want you to pay attention to that phrase that we just read in verse 3. Notice there at the end where the Bible tells us that Jesus, and then it says, the God of all comfort. Let's pray together. Lord, I ask that you meet with us in this time together this morning. I pray that you would use this time to be a help and an encouragement to all who are here. Thank you again for the weather. Lord, thank you even for the bit of cloud cover that we have now. And I pray that you would focus in our attention, calm the wind, and Lord, help us to see you now in a very clear and distinct way. And I ask that you would have your way with us this morning. Some people are discomforted. Lord, there are some people whose lives have been made very uncomfortable in these days. And I pray that we would see you today as the true God of all comfort as you're described here in this passage. Help us with the, these things. Help us with this thought, I pray. In Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give you just a real, simple, basic statement that defines me. Okay? Are you ready? I like what I like. Now, when I say I like what I like, how many of you can relate? <laughs> I like what I like. I heard one person. I see a big hand over there. That's good. <laughs> what I mean by that is there are certain things that are particular to me that I like and that I enjoy. And once I find something that I like, I stay with it. I don't like to change things up if I enjoy something or if I like what I like. When I go to an Italian restaurant, I like the chicken parmesan. Amen? Can I get an amen right there? And uh, I like the angel hair pasta. I, I don't like the regular pasta. I like angel hair pasta. Uh, I like uh, diet cherry Coke or Coke, di or Coke Zero Cherry. That that's what I like. Uh, my dress shoes, I like Echo, E-C-C-O. I don't think I've owned any other pair of dress shoes other than Echoes for the past I don't know how many years. Uh, when I go to get my hair cut, I, I like to start with a, number, a, a half clip at the bottom and fade it up to a one and then trimmed real close all around. Okay, that, that's how I like my hair. I just like what I like and I don't deviate too much from what I enjoy. 
Uh, is anyone else like that? You just get caught in what you enjoy and what makes you comfortable? <laughs> I like what I like. And if something gets changed in all of my likes, uh, I become very uncomfortable. And I don't really enjoy that very much. I, I like my patterns and I like the habits that I get into and I enjoy uh, certain aspects of, of life. But I don't like to change once I've found something that I enjoy. And I can become such a crazy creature of habit, it's almost ridiculous. Now, here in our passage, we are reading an epistle from the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of God to the church at Corinth. And the church at Corinth was a church that had recently been made very uncomfortable. Now, Paul had started this church, and he had stayed there, and he had pastored that group of people, and uh, not long after he returned to Judea from his second missionary journey, he received word from Titus uh, that, that the church was not doing well at all. And this church liked their dysfunction. They didn't want to be a good, healthy, Bible-believing, practicing church. They, they kind of liked dysfunction. They enjoyed not doing things the right way. And there were people that had gotten in and had worked into the church and had brought uh, a lot of false teaching. Uh, they had gotten caught up in wrong behaviors. And it really began to, to leave a, a bad testimony on the church of God and in Corinth and in the surrounding areas. And so 1 Corinthians is a rebuke. It's a letter of rebuke written by the Apostle Paul, but ultimately a message from the Lord to his people to get their act together and to start doing what they should be doing and to stop growing so comfortable in all of their dysfunction but to begin behaving correctly and serving God and living according to right doctrine and to listen to the Apostle Paul and what he had said so then after that takes place a second epistle is written and that's the epistle of the second Corinthians and it's written primarily as a letter of encouragement and exhortation as well as a reinforcement of Paul's own apostleship and of the right doctrine and practices of the local church. But the, t the whole tone of this letter is very different, even from the very beginning. It's not a tone of rebuke. It's not like the other letter where Paul is giving them one admonition after another, but this was the church who had learned some things, and so now he begins this letter with words of comfort and he describes the Lord in verse 3 as the God of all comfort I want to say this morning I'm thankful that our God is a God of all comfort amen I'm glad that he can comfort us and it doesn't matter what we're facing or going through he's a God of all comfort now the word comfort here in our passage means to console or to make content we often think of words like encouragement or exhortation it, it's helping somebody where they are and whether it's uh, through words of encouragement in days not that long ago it would be an arm around somebody not so much these days hopefully we'll get there again soon a prayer a, a helping hand a note some kind of financial help or offering a resource all of these things are very comforting. And being comforted in the Lord is a vital necessity in the Christian life. This is that comfort that can only be found from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, there's just simply some times in life and there's some situations we face where quite honestly, unless it's the Lord comforting us, we'll find ourselves inconsolable. Maybe you've been in that situation before with a baby or a toddler, and I see some little ones over here with Jordan and uh, some other ones where they have, oh, they're not here today, okay. There's, there, there's some back there. Oh, okay, they got the big ones here. <laughs> but uh, sometimes little ones and toddlers and babies can become inconsolable. And uh, it almost seems like no matter what you do, you can't help them. You know, sometimes in our life, we might find ourselves in the same place where there's only one answer that will help. 
There's only one bit of comfort that's going to be all that we need. There's only one word of encouragement. There's only the presence of, of one that's going to help us, and that is the comfort from the God of all comfort, the comfort from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just thankful that he can comfort us in any situation, in all situations. He's there for us, he can help us, and he can comfort us. There's no difficulty that he can't help us through because he's the God of all comfort. Uh, there's no trial we face that he can't bring us through and help us to overcome because he's the God of all comfort. There's no relationship problem facing us this morning that we can't work our way through with the help of God because he's the God of all comfort. Listen, I'm simply saying there is no uh, emotional, physical, mental, or any other type of difficulty that we're facing today that we can't find help or consolement in from the God of all comfort because that's exactly who he is to us. The one who can help us through anything. The Bible tells us over in John chapter 14 that right before Jesus was to leave this life, he promised his disciples and he promised us something. He promised us that he would not leave us comfortless, but that he would give to us another comforter. The Bible says in John 14 and verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comfort another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise the Lord for that this morning. That the Lord, when he went to heaven, he didn't leave us on our own, and he didn't leave us by ourselves. And he didn't go and say, hey, try to figure it out and try to get work it out and try to just find your way here. He said, I'm going, but I'm not leaving you by yourself, and I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'm sending you another comforter. I'm sending you myself in the form of the Holy Spirit of God who can and will reside in your heart and reside in your life. I have another comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit. And you know what happens when a person trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ and is saved? They receive the Holy Spirit of God to reside in their heart and in their life from that time forward. I think of David in the Old Testament. When he returned with his men to Ziklag, and he found that that, that place had been burned down to the ground, and all of their women and children had been taken captive and taken prisoner and taken away from that place and they didn't know where they had gone they just knew that the enemy had come and had destroyed everything and taken their families away and David was mightily discouraged and the Bible says that his own men spake of stoning him but then the Word of God reminds us that David encouraged himself in the Lord how was it that David could do that well, I'll remind you that in the Old Testament, the only person we read in the Old Testament who had the Spirit of God that remained with them from the time the Spirit of God came on them was David. And in some ways, he's a precursor of our relationship with God now and that when the Spirit of God comes upon a person now and we receive that Holy Spirit of promise, we are sealed until the day of redemption and we never lose that Holy Spirit. Praise God, we cannot lose the Spirit. He remains with us, amen. David had the spirit with him from the time he came on him until the time he died and is with him now in glory. And likewise, we have the spirit with us from now until the time we go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ ourselves. And like David, we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. Not because we can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Not because we're somehow able to do it within and of ourselves and with the power of the mind or what we have, but because we have the spirit of God who is the God of all comfort. I want to just quickly give several several practical thoughts for us as we consider the God of all comfort today. First of all, there is a reason for being comforted. There's a reason for being comforted. The Bible tells us in verse 4, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Notice the verse, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble 
by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. This virus, this pandemic, this situation that we're in, it, it is it has made me uncomfortable. And I have been I have become discomforted by it. I believe it's by God's design, and I believe it's for good in my life and for good in all of our lives ultimately. As we said last week, the Lord worketh all things together for good, but I'm still uncomfortable in it. But do you know that there's a reason for why we go through these things? It's so that God can show himself real and present and can comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trump trouble. So the ultimate reason for why we go through difficulty and then are comforted is so that we can comfort others. The goodness of God is not for us to keep unto ourselves, but to use so that we might be a help and a blessing to as many people as we can as we go through these situations in life. According to verse 5, the more we suffer and the more we are comforted, therefore the more we can do to help others. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And then in verse 6, the Bible says, And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. I'm just simply saying this morning that it's not for our benefit alone that we are comforted, but it's ultimately for someone else's comfort. And when we go through a situation or a trial in life, and only God comes and consoles us because he's the only one who can, we can then in turn turn around and help somebody and share with somebody how we went through what we went through and how God has been faithful through it all. Isn't our God a faithful God? I'm so glad he is. I don't know what the future holds. Maybe this is the first of many pandemics. I hope not. I'm not a prophet and I'm not trying to predict that. I've told my kids several times, I've said, think about the, the story you're gonna tell to your grandkids one day if the Lord tarries in his coming. You can tell them about the great pandemic that came and how God showed himself faithful through it. And rather than sharing with them how hard and difficult it was and belly aching about how we never thought we were going to survive, we can share with future generations how God comforted us and helped us through it. That's what we are to do. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, the Bible tells us we have a high priest. And our high priest, he didn't come here and dwell in a separate way than what we dwell in this life. He was tempted at all points like as we are. He went through all of it. He, he suffered and he endured all of it. The Bible says, yet uh, without sin, God knows he's been here. He's gone through the infirmities and the difficulties of life. And he knows exactly what we're going through. He knows the difficulty we're facing now in this pandemic. He knows the financial difficulty you might be facing now as a family or as an individual. He knows the problem you're having with trying to find employment. He understands how you're not sure about the future or what it holds or how you're going to continue on. The Lord knows about all of that. And he can help you, ultimately, so that you can help others. Here's a second thought. There is a rest in our soul when we are comforted. When God intervenes in our situation and begins to comfort us, there's a peace and rest that comes to our soul regardless of what we're facing. You see, Paul is being quite genuine in this letter. He's being real like he often was. And he's telling them about the difficulties he had faced. And he says in verse 7, And our hope for, of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation Verse 8, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Verse 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, 
but in God which raiseth the dead. Amen. So Paul's saying, listen, we have had our fair share of troubles. Life was not a bed of roses. It was not a bowl of cherries. It was not a cakewalk. Use any euphemism you want. Uh, life was not easy, and it wasn't easy for the great apostle Paul. It, he had trouble and difficulty every step of the way. In Ephesus, he says, we had trouble. And if you'll study Paul's missionary journey and ministry in Ephesus, there was Demetrius the silversmith who rose up against him. There was Alexander the coppersmith who caused him much trouble. It has been widely believed that Paul was made to stand before a wild beast in a fight to the death. You don't have to turn there, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 32, the Bible says, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17, he says very clearly, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And we're facing a nasty virus these days that I believe is getting better. And I believe we're, we're, we're starting to see the, the tide turn and the, and the curve flattened. And we're beginning to gain victory, I believe, in this battle that we're in. But can I ask a question? Have any of you ever stared down a lion? Apparently, the Apostle Paul did. The Lord helped him in that situation because he says, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. In all these situations, although Paul and his company despaired and even had the sentence of death upon them, listen, they were not dead and God was not done with them. Uh, in the midst of this pandemic, I've been reading some stories about some people who have suffered from it and who are literally on the brink of death who are now completely whole and healthy again. Several Christians, even a couple of preachers that I know, who were on death's door, who literally couldn't get breath in their lungs, who couldn't get enough oxygen to, to take their next breath sufficiently, and they were almost dead, and both of them have been delivered, the ones I've read about, and they both said, it was only God who brought me through. It was only God who delivered me, and they, they called out to God for their life, and God answered and God delivered. I'm glad that our God delivers us. He is the great deliverer. Even though they had the sentence of death in themselves, Paul understood our God is the God who raises the dead. In verse 10 he says, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Oh, let me tell you this morning, our God is the great deliverer. I read in Psalm 91 a few weeks back, but in Psalm 91 and verse 3, the Bible says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He delivers us. He delivers us from the snare of Satan, and he delivers us from the pestilence or diseases that are brought into this world because he's our deliverer. In John chapter 8 and verse 36, we see what deliverance is and how it's defined. Ultimately, we are delivered from sin and from eternal death you see the bible says in john 8 36 if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed that's deliverance we are a free people and we are a free people not because our constitution or declaration of independence tells us that although i'm glad it says that we're free in this country ultimately our freedom comes from above our freedom comes from god we are free in Him. And listen, if our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, if the Son hath set you free, if you've trusted in Him for salvation, the Bible says you are free indeed. What great truth this morning. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 6.23 reminds us, for the wages of sin is death, but... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, while the wages of sin is death, we have a God who can cleanse us from all our sins. And we understand that the gift of God is eternal life, and it's free, and it's available to anybody who will just receive it openly today. The gift of God is free, and it's available, and he's presented it to you. 
And if you've not trusted in him, call upon him and trust him and receive his free gift. And you will truly be made free, not just now in this life, not just in this country, but forever. Paul uses this previous example as an opportunity now to comfort the Corinthian Christians. And it's a good lesson for all of us. In the midst of your difficulty and discomfort in life, may God help us to refrain from fussing about the, all the difficulties. And although we go through them, may God help us to reference them later after we've been brought through. So rather than cussing, or, or not, not cussing, excuse me, rather than fussing and complaining, I wasn't thinking about cussing, I was mixing fussing and complaining together, okay? <laughs> I hope it's not cussing for some of you, I, I, I really hope not. But rather than fussing or complaining or doing anything else in the midst of our trial or our difficulty, may God help us to embrace it and accept it, come through it, and then comfort someone else once he has brought us through. See, the Lord can use anything in your life to help be a blessing to someone else and that's ultimately why he brings us through it <clears throat> to help somebody maybe a future generation will face something similar we can help them we can tell them about this pandemic maybe you'll come across a christian down the road who will have some great financial burdens and you can say i've had them and i have them now but god has been faithful oh there's all kinds of difficulties we go through but God wants to, to take that difficulty and turn it around and use it to be a blessing in your own life and in someone else's life as well. And that brings me to my third and final thought, and that is there is a wonderful result of being comforted. Notice verse 11. <clears throat> Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of of many persons thanks may be given by many on our behalf for our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom but by the grace of god we had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word we see that the wonderful result of being comforted is the gift of answered prayer and being brought through our trouble and finding deliverance ultimately from God. Robert Louis Stevenson tells of a storm that caught a vessel off a rocky coast and it threatened to drive it and its passengers to destruction and in the midst of the terror one daring man disobeyed orders and even contrary to what he was told he went up to the deck and he made the dangerous passage to the pilot house and there in the pilot house, he saw the steerman. He was at his post holding the wheel unwaveringly. And inch by inch, he saw him turning the ship out once more to sea. The pilot saw the watcher and just gave him a, a nice smile. After that, the daring passenger went back below deck and he gave out a note of cheer. He said, I have seen the face of the pilot and he smiled, he smiled at me. Take heart, all is well. Now my friends, that's comfort. To know that in the midst of our greatest storm, the pilot's at the wheel and he's smiling at us and he says, all is well. Everything's all right in my father's house. Listen, we might not be in the church house, but we still are the church of God here this morning, amen? And the Lord says, everything's all right with my people. Everything's all right. It's going to be okay. You can believe me and you can trust me. Sometimes doesn't that just help us hearing that everything's going to be just fine. Everything's going to work out and be okay. Not because someone told us, but because God has promised us. There's a closeness of God's people that comes together in intercessory prayer and cooperation and unity that develops amongst God's people when he brings us through. We find ourselves helped and comforted by others. 
And then there's that sweet spirit and genuine gratitude and attitude of thanks. And God finds himself glorified. You know, I, I want to help our church with this, and this is my final thought this morning. First of all, if you don't know the Lord, accept him now. Because if we think that we're uncomfortable in this life, it pales in comparison to an eternity without the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear that there's a place called hell. The Bible tells us in that place called hell that the, the flame is not quenched and the worm dies not. And it goes on forever and forever and forever. And it's a place of torments and it's not a place where anybody wants to go. We have no idea of what being uncomfortable and being in misery is unless we face that existence and I don't wish that on anybody we need to trust him but we also need to turn sometimes to the God of comfort because we might find ourselves right now in a situation where our spouse can't comfort us mom and dad can't comfort us right now our closest friend might give some words of encouragement but it's not the ultimate comfort that we need. We need to look to God and turn to Him. And through the power and presence of His Holy Spirit, I want to guarantee you this. He is the God of all comfort. He's all sufficient. And if we'll look to Him, and we'll, if we'll ask Him for help, He will comfort us in a way that we never imagined before. God's available. He's present. And he's present now in the midst of this situation that we're in today, or whatever situation we find ourselves in, and he's presenting himself to you. Look to him. Find comfort in him. Sometimes we're at a place like David where all we can do is find encouragement in the Lord and encourage ourselves in him. Everybody was against him in that moment. His men wanted to stone him. His families were gone and for all he knew, dead. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. May we as God's people not fuss and complain and bellyache and talk about how bad things are. I don't want that attitude. I don't want that spirit. Daily I've been trying to remind myself that with God I can have a far better spirit. With God I can take the high road. With God, I can overcome all things. With God, I can be comforted. And with God, I can overcome and I can find victory. I want that attitude. I want that spirit. Because he is the God of all comfort. And he's the God who delivers. Let's take a moment and pray together. I'd like to ask Holly if she would come. And I don't know if you have something ready to play, Holly. But I do want to take a moment or two of invitation if we can. But right now, if you're with us online or if you're with us here today on the property, would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And I want to give you an opportunity to call out to the God who delivers and comforts. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you and he paid the penalty for your sin. If you'll call upon him today, he'll deliver you out of that sin and bondage. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you a new name written down in glory. And he'll help you in whatever situation or problem you're facing. He can do that and he wants to do that. No matter what you're involved in or no matter what you're faced with today, ultimately when the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, God is your Father and he's your Deliverer and Comforter, you can face anything. Would you call upon him today for salvation? You simply need to admit that you're a sinner. Believe and trust in Jesus and call upon him to save you. And in the quietness of this moment, would you just pray this prayer to God? Say, dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I acknowledge that I have broken your law. But I believe that Jesus is God's son. That he was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. And I'm asking you to save me. Come into my life and help me to live for you.
heads bowed and with eyes closed, listen, if you just made that prayer and trusted in Jesus Christ, would you make that clear? Maybe you're a child, you can tell your parents. Maybe you're an adult and you want to tell us on the live stream or send us an email. You can, you can message us through the church messenger on Facebook or you can send us an email at pastor at truthbaptistchurch.com. We want to be a help and blessing to you. I want to help you to take these steps in the Christian life. For everybody now, for all believers, would you trust in him and believe in him today? Would you look to him for comfort? Sometimes that's the only place we can go. But he's always there and he's always available. He wants to help you today right where you are. Maybe this virus has affected your finances. God can comfort you and he can help you and deliver you. Maybe this virus has affected relationships. Maybe it's affected your physical condition and you're nervous and eaten up with anxiety. You're not sure about what's coming next. God can comfort you. Far greater than anyone or anything else. Listen, the doctors of our day won't comfort us. All they'll do is discourage us. <laughs> as soon as we hear some good news, they want to give us discouraging news. The politicians, they'll promise you everything and deliver nothing. Oh, but God. He gives us comfort, he promises it, and he delivers it every single time. Let's look to him. Let's believe and trust him. And then a day is going to come where we will be a help to someone else because of what God has done in our heart and in our life. Father, work now in this moment or two of invitation. Encourage all who are here as well as those who are joining by way of live stream. Speak to hearts now. Use this time, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take our moment or two to hear a verse or two of inv invitation. Amen. Thank you, Holly. Anytime I don't know what to do, I just place all my faith and trust in you. God is good. Amen. And, uh, he wants to help you today. Praise the Lord. Hey, thank you for being here. I think this is the highest attendance of vehicles and folks that we've had here yet. So praise the Lord. All right, let's hear it for that. Amen. I want to let you know I love you as pastor and as friend, and uh, we're glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. If you have an offering to drop off, you can drop it off as you go. I hope you'll tune in tonight again at 6 o'clock. I am going to have a live stream at some point this week. I don't think it will be Tuesday morning at 9 because I have a meeting uh, with the VAIB that morning. And so I believe we'll make it Wednesday morning at 9. I want to make it an interactive live stream again. And then don't forget Wednesday night, our midweek service, hearing a message from Brother Parisher, and then all that is ahead. We'll plan on a uh, Sunday or a Saturday morning men's Zoom prayer meeting as well, and we'll announce all these things as we continue on. We're praying for you. If we could be a help or blessing to you in any way, let us know. God bless you. We'll see you again soon.